We've got to the stage now with the Blast Furnace Life Extension project where the hole in the shell has been closed up and now we're moving on to replacing the refractory bricks inside the furnace. We're here at the North Tap Hole today with Taco Janssen. Taco is a specialist refractories engineer who has been involved in the project uh, for over a year now, planning uh, in detail how these refractories are going to fit the furnace and getting them in place. Taco, thanks very much for uh, welcoming us down here today. Uh, now, I said this has been some time in the planning. What does that planning involve? Well, the planning involves first, of course, the design and making sure you get all the dimensions right, planning the scope of works and making drawings of the shapes of bricks that you need after. And then it's a matter of ordering those bricks and basically go out to the factory to check those bricks because you want to be absolutely sure they're absolutely two dimension before they arrive on site here. And to those people uh, who don't really understand the purpose of the refractory bricks, tell us a bit about you know, how many layers are there in the furnace and what's their role? Well, in the furnace, we start at the bottom. In the bottom, there are three layers. Two of them are basically carbon. Carbon is very good at extracting heat from the half process. And then there is like a ceramic layer on top, which is chemical resistant. How many sort of bricks and what sort of tonnage are we talking about? Well, in total of the whole furnace project, including what we are going to do in all the runners, it's between 2,300 and 2,500 tonnes of refractory material that we're applying. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of material and it's a lot of work. Uh, so why don't we just go in and have a look and see where it's going now. Sounds like a good plan. Have a look. So Taka, we're inside the furnace itself now. Um, just explain to us what we can see around us here. So what we can see is, is first the, the black floor you're seeing. Those are the new carbon blocks that I was checking in Poland. And then you can see that they're all married up and connected to existing sidewall blocks, which we cut out and then compensated with a, a joint there again. And then behind us you see white brickwork, which is the so-called mullite arrestor course which is the chemical resistant layer, which is basically the, the first layer in the, the half process where we are into. So it might be quite difficult to see on the camera, but all around the furnace, he can, we can see inside the shell here this black layer that has been cleaned down. What is that black layer there, Taco? That black layer is existing carbon, so similar blocks as we've laid on the ground and been put in in 2002. They have been worn away a bit. We basically took away the, the compromised bit with a, a grinder and that's how we clean the wall, ready for a shotcrete layer to go over it. So that's where the gunning is going to take place and I guess quite shortly uh, the bricking in here will be completed and then you can hand over to the uh, project to get the furnace back online. How, how long do you think uh, uh, are we are from finishing the bricking? The, the bricking will be for another probably 10 days to finish it all off and then uh, okay yeah we can add it over then to the rest of the works that need to happen. So you can see there's a tremendous amount of work going on here. The planning has been unbelievable in terms of the detail for such a huge project. Um, but the guys have now had that plan. They're putting it into place. Uh, you know, it looks fantastic on the floor. And there's a lot of work going on with the mullite layer. Uh, still lots to do, uh, but certainly on its way. So, Taco, we'd love to come back and see the tap hole when that's being put in. But today, thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. And you're more than welcome to come back to see that, of course. Great.